Hey, what's going on? This is Jake Hofer with Exodus Trail Cameras. This week we have an instant classic. It is with Mark and Hunter Luster. Now, Mark is a bit of a industry veteran, if you will. He's filmed with juries and various other TV shows, and you get to check out some of the snippets of those hunts in this episode. You also get to check out some 200 inch deer, giant net typicals, and just everything that encompasses Iowa and a whitetail nut. So we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you do, hit the like button and subscribe. Now let's go. How's it going? Come on in. This is my humble abode. My name's Mark Luster. I work for the Illinois Department of Corrections. Uh, I have for 23 years. This is my son, Hunter. Nice to meet you. Um, in 2012, I drew my first tag in Iowa. I would say that I probably wasn't in the stand more than about 20 seconds. I know that's crazy to say, but I filled my first tag, and I just knew then that I had to move to Iowa. So I put in a transfer um, with the prison system. There's two prisons pretty close to Iowa. And the first one that gave me an opportunity to, to transfer up there, I move off into Iowa. So a lot of our deer are Illinois and Iowa. I have a Kansas one in here too, and an Alberta mule deer that we'll get to. But uh, anyway, I wanted to show you guys first the um, whitetail that started the whole move to Iowa and caused all of this. So actually it is this one and I'm not even a hundred percent certain it wasn't a three year old deer. We were hunting in Kansas, drove five hours through the middle of the night because it was going to be hot in Kansas and, and, and cool in Iowa. And I'd never been on the farm other than, than looking at aerials, picked up the aerial, decided where I wanted to hunt. We hung and hunted at daylight and shot this 16 pointer. It pretty much set our course on path from then on ironically speaking i went back to kansas after killing that and this kansas buck uh was the deer that i killed next in that same year really nice 12 point he has a broken brow tine but i really didn't care he was a pretty nice deer so then this is actually hunter's first deer he killed at nine i filmed it probably the most excited i've ever been out of any deer in my life it is actually a 161 inch eight point it has 11 plus inch brow tines it is a crazy crazy deer the brows come forward and back and angle together it's a ton of character big big beams i absolutely love that deer probably still one of my most favorite hunts um this one here is iowa buck uh 182 is that right 182 big 10 double fork brows really really love that deer that was a pretty cool hunt too this deer um, is actually net net Boone and Crockett deer. Um, he also has big big brows. I think they're they're right at ten inches. Um, this one's an Illinois buck killed November seventh. I think they claim that that's the number one day. I think that you kill Boone and Crockett deer, so that kind of holds true to that deer, to that one. Um, come on in here. I'll show you some. Uh, we've got a few match set sheds that we've got. Um, this one here, um, I was doing a little bit of filming and hunting on a, on a show, The Legends of the Fall, and I shot this deer. I, I, we named him the Facebook Buck. I actually had a cameraman with me. And when we first seen him, he's like, that deer is Facebook worthy. And I looked up at him and I said, you know what? You just named that deer. I said, we're going to name him Facebook. This probably is one of my most favorite hunts of all time. A lot of CRP was very visible where he was at. Uh, seven hunts, seen him six times. Uh, killed him 12.30 in the afternoon. On November 3rd, I shot that deer. Um, this deer here is crazy deer. Was it, it probably my first 200 inch deer, but he's got seven tines busted. He's got busted brow tines, busted end of his beam, busted drop tine. Busted G4, time between his G4. I mean, he busted a bunch up, but still was 182 inch, one inch deer. Um, Illinois deer, I actually 
uh, pretty good friends with Jim Tomey, and he had invited me to come hunt on his farm, and that was day one. Hunt one, day one, that was what showed up. So thank you very much, Jim. Uh, really cool, really cool deer. Actually, and as bad as I hate to say this, just to show that everybody's human, um, I absolutely missed that deer. <laughs> with the first shot and he didn't know what happened and I got to reload and he walked closer and I ended up shooting that deer so that was my mistake deer that actually ended up working out um, this deer is probably if there's such thing as a famous deer uh, is my most famous deer this is the buck I named dozer um, when my son was five when my son was five I shot this deer I was filming and hunting with Drury Outdoors actually as a subcontractor and that deer I had sheds from, pictures of, from three, four, five, six, seven, shot him at eight and a half. That's, that's the longest chase I ever had on one um, and probably the nearest and dearest to my heart uh, that particular deer is. I can still remember that day like it was going out of like like it was yesterday it's uh october 25th i shot that deer it's kind of funny i know i know that deer my my dad and my brother in two consecutive days had said that they seen a huge deer chasing a doe around october 23rd and 24th um was chasing doe around with triplets and we knew that doe very very well so i went in and hung and hunted to try to shoot that doe i was thinking that i knew the deer the, the buck and I knew the doe and I knew that the buck knew the doe and he knew that she was the first one to come in the heat every year so he was coming to check her every single day to see if she had popped in and old, old Janet with the three doe three doe fawns got him killed on October 25th caribou uh DIY caribou hunt in Alaska if you've never been I highly suggest it it's by far the most beautiful place on earth. So I'll bring you around, I'll show you some sheds that I've got. There's some here, there's the match set. It's kind of kind of cool. This one, this one's very unique. Hunter picked up this set here. Actually, was it two years ago now? Mm -hmm. um, he's got these curved in beams right there and he disappeared on us last year. He showed up this year and is a mega giant. I, I, I think he's a 190s deer, uh, very, very big deer this year this deer actually unfortunately is dead i uh i passed this deer up with this rack actually i had him at like five yards at full draw and he was with a hot doe and he was just bedded there he stood up she was bedded there actually my only spot and stalk deer of my life actually whitetail uh i seen him bed down out of the stand and it was really windy i stalked in on him but i was pretty certain he was four so i wasn't going to shoot him um, and then the shotgun hunter killed him later on that year. So I'll come on and bring you over here. I, this, this shed here is Buck I, I call Larry. Uh, if any of you have ever seen or follow me on Facebook, uh, this deer turned into something special. He will be the deer that I'm after this year. This is his four year old shed, seemingly not too impressive. He's got some chew marks right here on it. He had two little two little short two inch insides right there on both sides of his rack. They now have turned into huge long points. He's a big 10. I think he was 220s this year. He got himself busted up pretty early. So we kind of took him off of the hit list, but we really didn't want him to walk by because he still had like 200 inches of antlers on him. This deer is probably the deer I'm the most sour about. I, uh, I got his sheds at one side at two in that pile there i think this is him at three he had this big shelf on the inside of his beams and he started these inside tines same farm as this deer and then at four he blew up 25 points just a huge giant and I, we've got video so I, I actually messaged the neighbor the neighbor's got quite a bit of ground and i'd said hey uh because this is the age-old question do you tell your neighbor about a giant so, but it was a giant that we didn't want to kill. We knew he was still young. And I had videoed passing him at two, at three, uh, sheds at two, at three. And then at four, he threw just tines everywhere. 
And then Hunter actually was at 17. I did not ask him to because how do you ask a 17-year-old to pass a giant? But Hunter passed him, videoed it with his phone. Um, and then the neighbor that promised me he would not shoot this deer shot this deer at 196 inches as a four-year-old. And it, it broke my heart. <laughs> uh, same neighbor shot this deer, as I hate to say it. Uh, Two-year sheds of him. It's a, it's a buck we knew very well. It was a buck I was after. I think it was 178 whenever he killed it. Pretty cool deer. Then, well, this is a set we picked up to this year. Uh, this particular deer is a deer we got a bunch of trail cam pictures of. We didn't, I mean, he wasn't on the kill list, I guess you could say, but pretty certain he was a four-year-old, and he started throwing some insides, and he's got some bumps like he wants to do something with the drop tine, and he's bumped up. I think he's going to get gnarly this year with age, so we'll see how that works out. And then two-year-old buck that has a huge beam, really short G2 here. I didn't see him last year. Uh, this is on a permission farm. And then this year, as a four-year-old, he blew up. He's a mid-170s type deer. Um, got a ton of trail cam pictures of it, but again, that's a permission piece, and this was the only, like, big deer on the farm, and we didn't want to hunt the four-year-old because he's a clean, typical 10, and it's pretty hard to pass mid-170s 10s, but um, we just figured we're not going to hunt it at all, and if we don't hunt it at all, then hopefully he makes it. So I haven't heard about anybody shooting him, so I'm pretty certain he's alive. And then this rack of them right here, my son has pretty much picked them all up. This this one is when I believe that he was three. And then Hunter picked this one up while we was picking up a bunch of mushrooms last year. I almost we, didn't find it. Yeah, we walked it right so past thick. it. Ironically speaking, this, this shed was five yards from my stand yeah or less I, or less i mean he was laying there and we had a bag full of mushrooms and a big old shed and then hunter while i was at work at the prison the, the other day last week picked up this thing and it's of the same same deer um no question about it and we took it to the Iowa Deer and, Tur Deer and Turkey Classic this year. I actually got second typical with it. He got second typical. This little kicker right here was the reason he didn't get it. Because it netted, this netted, after they deducted this, 85 and 7 eighths. He's a 190 class deer. This is his other side. So Hunter went back the next day with a buddy of mine, Ben Thompson. And they started grid searching. And after three hours or a little more they found it 40 yards from where he found the first one <laughs> i walked i walked by it probably four times five times but he but he's broke the g5 off this um and i will say this we don't know how long that was because when we started getting good pictures of him this year he done broke that so i don't i have no idea how long that g5 was but he is uh he is hunter's number one this next year that he's he's after so Hopefully he can put a put a big typical on the wall. Let's uh, let's go to the wall here. Um, I might bounce around a little bit here because there's a pretty interesting story with these. So this buck here is Hunter's deer, uh, grossed 175. Um, I can't remember what he netted, but it's 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 under the Boone and Crockett record book, but. He grossed 175. We had a ton of trail cam pictures of this deer. He was six and a half, and we called him Twin Towers because his G4 on his right side every year was always identical. We'd get profile pictures of him, and you couldn't see an inch's worth of deduction on that deer ever, except for this one little sticker. He had that sticker there every year from four, five, and six. He ended up going 175 this year, but, but on his top of his beam there, I think he messed up in velvet, so it's kind of pushed a little bit to the side, and it's a little bit flat. So I think he messed up in velvet because he was absolutely perfect every year, and then he shorted the G4 like four inches on that side this year when he shot him. But he hammered him, dropped him in his tracks, uh, 
And we have a picture of this deer, and he was six and a half this year, with another deer that was six and a half that Hunter also killed. He has a lot going on. So this deer here has triple beam, triple brow, double brow, drop tine, flyer. This side right here alone is 102 inches. Um, you can't get your hands around his base. It's just a huge deer. The crazy thing about this, this deer was also six and a half. We knew him at four, we knew him at five. And actually at five, he was a huge eight. And I had him early muzzleloader hunting and the deer came out and was standing at 50 yards for like 20 minutes. And I could have killed him a hundred times over and he could not see him through the leaves. And the deer walked away and we, I mean, again, again, I, I can't, I can't, I can't say enough about him making the right decision. If you don't have a clear shot, don't force a shot. So he didn't and look what happened. But the next year at six and a half, this is what he turned into, um, just got gnarly. And we, once he did get him down on his left back hip, um, there was a broadhead hole in the hide. Somebody had shot him the year before, presumably because he was a perfect eight all the other years. So October 25th of this year, I have an encounter with him. He comes in, there's a four year old, walks right below me in the morning and he's 30, 40 yards behind him. But as, as big old deer do, he just knew something wasn't right. And the four year old walked right under me 10 yards. And this one stopped up about 50, 55 yards out. Wasn't comfortable. I think he got just a little whiff of something, but he turned around and walked away. And they, he was leaving his bedding area crossing a dam of a, a pond that sets in the middle of the timber. So anyway, two days later, I go in and I hunt on the other side of the dam of the pond, but in the evening. And those two came across the dam of the pond, came by me at 10 yards, and then ducked down the hill and was going down the bottom. He was a fair distance behind me because he stopped at the pond and got a drink. Well, when he came across, rather because they went down the hill, rather than him following, as they always do, he cut the corner on me and, and, and cut the corner off the dam of the pond. Well, I went into panic mode, I'm not going to lie, yanked the bow back, and I did not know the distance because, I mean, he started running down to meet up with the other deer. And I rah, stopped him, and he's, he's face downhill. And, and I'm kind of on two sides of a hill, and I think I canted my bow, if we're being honest, between a rush shot and canning the bow. I, I did not make a great shot. But the moral of the story is, is that I hit him high and forward, and I went through both shoulder blades. And then we looked and looked for two days, three days, and did not find him. And I don't know if that's the reason that we run Baltimore off the farm looking for him. And I even was sitting out there at night waiting so I could hear coyotes to go in on him. I mean, I did everything I could to recover this deer. He was gone for over a month. And then in late November, popped up with trail cameras again. Started showing back up. Seemingly no worse for the wear. And then January 5th, we, I had him late muzzleloader tag, and he's with six other bucks. I think there were seven total, and I was telling him to get, get set up, get ready. This is late muzzleloader, and when he was getting in to shoot where the first buck was crossing the creek, uh, it seen him. They all ran up the hill, was gone, so we backed out. I gave it a day to rest because they was pretty consistent in there. The wind was different two days later, but we went in and he was the first thing down the hill and Hunter shot and dropped him in his tracks. And that, that, that deer actually is 200 inches. And I, I, it's the only deer I've ever seen that's like that big that doesn't look it like it does. There's no good angle to this deer. Crazy, crazy story behind that deer. Um, then this particular deer is a 174 and some change inch deer that I was after a much bigger deer, another guy, actually Carl Gers cousin, <laughs> ended up shooting November 16th. The buck I called two folds, this huge, massive buck that had these two folds uh, between his brows and his G2, massive deer, 190 class deer. Um, I wanted him bad, but uh, Carl's cousin ended up shooting him and um, in the morning on the 16th, and then in the evening on the 16th, this thing walked by and uh, my target deer was gone, so... This is a consolation prize. 
So, and I'll take a 170 plus consolation prize every year and be okay with it. So, this deer here is um, a, bu a mule deer buck from Alberta. We went up on a mule deer hunt there, uh, spot and stalk from South Calgary. Very, very fun hunt because you kind of are staying up high and moving around and finding a deer you want to go after and then setting up top and spotting them until they go bed down out in canola or barley or whatever and then you wait till the wind kicks up a little bit gets right and then the stalk is on so you're like in the game all day and it's so much fun i highly recommend that if you ever get a opportunity to do it and I, I actually helped a guy sell his farm and he took me on that hunt for uh for helping him so that was that was a pretty cool thing of him to do and it was a it was an awful fun hunt and then that brings us to Zeus. This buck I killed this year. I uh, shot him October 28th. Uh, not many people can say they shot a 200 inch typical twice, but I did it two years in a row because I shot him and lost him <laughs> last year. Um, I hit a honeysuckle lamb and I actually hit him pretty right. Uh, but it, I think it, it kind of kicked the arrow a little bit sideways and I only got like an inch penetration. Um, but I mean, had it had all the kinetic energy behind the knock, I mean, he would have been a dead deer last year, and, and he was almost as big as he was this year, if not as big. He just didn't have this G5. He had everything else, just did not have that G5. This deer officially scored 209 and 3 eighths, I think. 202 typical and change. Nets, 187 and 3 eighths, I think it is. Had you take those little, these little, these little three kickers off of it, he's a net 195 10 point. Uh, because this one, you know, is just deducted off. So, um, like I said with the Facebook buck, I thought that that was the biggest typical I'd ever even have a chance to hunt until this guy came along. This, this deer I shot October 28th, the very first hunt in. This is a permission piece. It had a ton of pressure. I could tell you story after story, and we could be 30 minutes of me telling you stories about the pressure that was on it. But... Um, there's an outfitter, and it, but he's a really good guy that was that was leasing the ground on two sides of this farm and not really taking any other hunters in there. He was trying to kill it himself, as well as I had two other hunters hunting it on the same 80-acre piece that I was hunting on and shot this deer on. And he, uh, it was in the morning, 8:45 in the morning on uh, October 28th, and he was uh, coming back to to bed, presumably. And he did not respond well to the grunt, but whenever I took up the antlers and rattled, um, he held true to his name as the king of the woods because uh, Zeus come running down the hill so fast that I literally got stuck with him standing there 25 yards away with my antlers in my hand. <laughs> and uh, I had to, whenever he ducked his head under a honeysuckle limb, so a honeysuckle limb saved him and then killed him. So I guess I can't be that mad at him, but big honeysuckle bush and he had to, stick his head up under it to come up the hill at me so I got rid of the antlers grabbed the bow drew it back uh 25 yards he ended up broadside and uh so they say the rest is history and uh I I honestly I know it's my deer and I'm probably a little biased but I don't think they take them they don't make them much prettier than this deer he has everything he has four tines over 12 inches 28 inch beams uh, he not, does not have a mass measurement under five inches anywhere. He's got almost 46 inches of mass. Um, just the epitome of what a super Iowa whitetail typical is, or any typical for that matter in any state. But um, I, this is the reason that I moved to Iowa. And it's the, I mean, this, this type of deer, to hunt this type of deer. So actually either one of these, to be quite honest with you.